Thank you for tuning in today. We have a video that's going to be going over our puller line of brushed motors by popular request. So we've had some customers asking questions lately about our puller line of motors, the brushed motors in particular. And we have two different ones. If you look here, you can kind of see them as compared to some of the other brushed motors that we have. The puller 400 and the puller 500. And you can see that the 400 is a pretty short motor as compared to a normal 540 motor. The 500 is the same height as a normal 540 motor. And then you can see the 550 on the end for size comparison. So why do we have these two models of puller motor? And really it's for competition use. They are smaller, they are lighter, they have lots of punch, they're very smooth starting, and just all around a, a motor that I put a lot of effort into as far as the engineering. So the best way for me to probably explain them is to actually crack into them and show you what's going on. So I'm gonna grab what is a Puller 500 variant, and it's already kinda pre-disassembled. Oh, I got the screws on there. So I need to find myself a screwdriver that is the proper length for the job. Find yourself the longest screwdriver possible. I want to be able to get into the neighbor's yard with this guy if need be. So just a couple of screws on the end bell and it pops off just like a normal 540 motor. And here we go. It has similar parts to a normal 540 motor. The end bell has compatible parts. The brushes are compatible. And the armature on the Puller 500 is actually compatible with a 540 armature. So we yank this guy out. I should mention that they have very strong neodymium magnets. I'm gonna to have to get a little, a little help in hand. There we go. So here is our can, here's our armature, here is our end bell. I designed the can and the magnetics myself. I use a mostly off the shelf armature. This armature is compatible with normal 540 cans that we have like the Crawlmaster and Torque Master. And then as I said, it has end bell parts which are compatible as well. And as you can see on the inside, we have nice gold plated neodymium magnets in there. And that's for corrosion resistance and to ensure that we have a really good bond on the can. So you might want to see how the Puller 400 stacks up. And the 400 is just essentially a shorter motor. As you can see, we took about six millimeters off the motor so that it would uh, just be smaller. Mostly for competition guys, these really are competition style motors. Maybe you have a scale rig where you need a little bit more room inside, or maybe you have a motor on axle rig where you need that extra room around your links, or you want to drop an extra ounce from the motor. That is what these are for. The normal 500 drops one ounce over a 540, and the 400 drops another ounce over the 500 design. So that is pretty much it. They are offered in both three slot and five slot versions, depending on how smooth you want it, or if you want more torque density, you would go for the three slot version. If you want a smoother action, you would go for the five slot version. And really, there's not a lot of downsides, but I should talk about them. These are more expensive to manufacture and more expensive to purchase because of not only the materials, but we also manufacture these cans. I used to manufacture them in-house, but we have them CNC machine now out of house. And it is simply more expensive to use this in, as, uh, as opposed to the normal style Sagami can, which is a stamped housing, and it has less expensive magnets inside, which are ceramic. And you can see the thickness difference between these magnets. There's a lot of thickness difference, even though these small magnets have the same coercion force, they do the same work, but they are more expensive to manufacture because of that. Um, besides the cost, they have a slightly higher idle amp draw as well. And if you're really not putting them under much load, you'll find that your run times may go down just a little bit. It's about a 10% difference, 15% difference in idle amp draw. So if a normal motor has 1.1 amp of idle, then a puller version of that would have about a 1.2, 1.25 to 1.3 on the idle amps. Uh, some of the other downsides, you might get addicted to putting these into your rigs because they are lighter. It's easier to tune a rig with lighter weight on the chassis. You can throw your weight down low, still have the same total weight on the ground. Your tires will work the same there, but you'll have a lower center of gravity on the rig. And they're so smooth that you might just get used to that and say, I want this in all of my rigs. And the final downside of it is that they do not accept timing advance. Now these are meant for a crawler, so it really doesn't matter because you're gonna want pretty much equal performance in forwards and reverse. But if you're looking to put something 
into a fast rig, this is not your motor. They just don't accept timing advance. You pretty much set them at the lowest idle amp draw. Uh, as far as timing, it's gonna be really close to zero degrees, basically plus or minus three degrees on there. And that is it. That is what you get on the pullers. That's how I designed it. We're looking for torque density, efficiency, and smoothness. So that is what the pullers are about. As you can see, nice and small and compact and smooth and all the other things that I talked about. And they assemble pretty much like any other motor. Just put these screws in the end bell. And maybe I'll go ahead and mention that instead of having the screws with a retaining ring like a normal 540, we actually have slots in the end bell. Maybe you can see that on the tight cam there. So the screws go into the can and then they allow the end bell to slide in the slots. So the longest screwdriver that we can find, just a little bit of tension on these bolts, don't need too much. And this isn't a proper assembly. I didn't put the washers back in. We don't have springs on there, but I think you get the idea. And if you do want to get some experience on rebuilding motors, we do have some videos on those. So check those out if you want to know more. And I appreciate you for tuning in. Have a good day.